Hey everybody, welcome in that uh, new tutorial in which I'll show how to add procedural variation on top of your animation. So there are some situations where um, when you play a motion and you had variations such as um, start percent, uh, different speed, you still can spot the fact that this is the exact same animation. So let me show you here, I'm having uh, one clip and what I'm going to do is change the start frame so they may uh, uh, move in uh, various um, starting frame into that animation there and uh, I can also like slightly change the speed ratio I cannot mirror this animation else my characters will handle the spear in their right hand so that's not exactly what I do but even with you know those tricks here it's quite obvious that they are all playing the same clip and uh, probably what makes it even more obvious is the fact that that spear here is pretty big and uh, we can see the shape and the pattern it has so in some situation we may want to add some random noise onto that wrist to provide some slide variation make it more organic and probably same thing for the shield here which is pretty well aligned here in that legend so to do this what i can uh, drop here is going to be the channel operator behavior and the idea of the channel operator behavior is to build your own graph of you know, minimal actions that you can assign to your characters. So I'm uh, gonna jump into this and let's say I want to uh, first uh, add some procedural variation on my right wrist. I'm gonna create a new channel for that. And let's say I want to add some variation on the left wrist as well. I can create another channel. So those channels here, they're just uh, listed here. And obviously if we want to see where they're going on, how you configure them, other you can use on uh, this button here it will bring you to the show, um, output node or you can directly open the channel operator editor which is also available from here by the way so i'm having my uh, two outputs here so let's rename this so i'm going to rename this out right wrist orientation or copy this and i'm going to rename this out left wrist or so let's take a look at that node here so we can see that we can write so this is an output node which means we can write we're going to write some values in it and those values can be used to whatever we want so we can write our values into a golem attribute a pp attribute um, a bone a position and various channels and here as we want to influence the rest what we're gonna um, handle is going to be the bone so i'm going to set a bone or a blind data so as soon as i set it up as a set bone or blind data i can expand that panel here so uh, bone means that it's going to be a skeleton channel here and blind data is going to be like a, a blend shape channel there so here as i said i want to take um, my right wrist orientation into control not all the components uh, but um, let's uh, figure which one we want to take into an uh, account. So I'm going to create a new bone output and into um, that tool here, I can list all the bone which are available in the scene. So for my character, I'm going to, well, let me check if I'm having a wrist node. Great. So I'm having a wrist R, um, probably for right. So here I'm saying, okay, I want my wrist R, X component of my rotation, um, to be headed with a specific value. So this specific value is going to be defined by all the nodes that we're going to put uh, before and combine before. What I can do is uh, probably just drop a really simple node, say that I want to cast this as a double and prob pro probably provide like a value. So let me provide like a really um, noticeable value here. So I'm going to provide 90. So 90 as for an orientation will act as a um, degrees and if i just plug those together here i'm saying okay my right wrist x component of my orientation will play the motion and on top of that will add a value of 90 degrees right so let's see if we do this we can see that now we're having a 90 degree orientation so we've been changing completely the orientation here right so what we really want to do probably there is going to be provide a smaller value and the value which will be different for all the characters. 
So instead of providing a double value here, I can go back to auto, set it back to zero if I want to. Um, instead, I can see that I have a lot of controls. I can put a double value. So this is what I just done, a vector. So probably not really what we want here. I can write that, read that value from a PP attribute, from a channel, from some script, some from a golem attribute that can be computed from elsewhere. But I also have access to a ramp. So that ramp is more like a noise ramp. And you can see that as soon as I set it up to ramp, um, everything grayed out and I'm, well, everything, my driven attribute grayed out and I'm having the uh, ramp control being available. So I can add a ramp or I can actually add as many as I want to, to be honest. And uh, that ramp, what it tells, so let me remove those ramps. They are not going to be useful here. That ramp, I can jump into them or they're going to be available from here and they're, um, you know, they're called crowd ramp here, but they're basically like a ramp controller. So you're going to specify what's going to be uh, the output range. So let's say I want my uh, characters to have an offset between minus 10 degrees and 10 degrees. So let's change my output there. Then this is going to be uh, what my ramp noise will look like. Um, I can define if I want the, um, my, each entity to pick a different values into my ramp here. I want to, I can say also if my ramp, my noise is dynamic, so is it going to be changing per frame? So yeah, is it a noise, is it a loop, or is it something else? And what's going to be the duration of that curve? So what's going to be the frequency of that evolution? So let's put more values. So last thing we need to do to take this into account is here we've been creating a ramp but you can notice that my expression here is empty and this is what really drives what goes out and what gets written into my out node there. So as I said, I can add as many ramp nodes as I want to. So I need to decide into my expression which ramp I want to evaluate. So I can open that helper node, for example, um, that helper uh, attribute uh, window. And it will list me all the channels which are available, all the golem attributes if there are any. So here there aren't any attributes. And also as I've created a ramp connected to that node, I can see I've got something called hashtag ramp zero hashtag. So ramp zero means the ramp at index zero. And here we can see that the ramp at index zero is going to be what we need. So I'm going to say, okay, I want to take this into account and inject this into my right wrist. So now if I select a character, I can see I'm having a value of minus seven, here minus two, here minus one, here two, plus two. Uh, that guy has plus nine, and that value here is changing through time. So let's say I don't want to change it through time, I can go back into the ramp, for example, and then I can say it's not dynamic anymore, which means all the characters, there will be a sign with a value and that value will be fixed. Or what I can do is say, okay, this is dynamic and it has a really wide range of variation. I want it to be really noisy and uh, to be really high frequency. And now you'll notice that those spears, well, they're not doing exactly what they should. Well, they, they are doing what they should, but this is probably not a good idea to use this for the spears in that situation, right? So plenty of various options if you want to expand that range if you only want to um, uh, move into one direction that's something which can be done right and um, the really neat thing is that we can do something similar for the shield so that shield for example um, i'm gonna say i want to set a bone so as soon as i've got um, uh, the set bone here being applied uh, it expands the bone controller i can go into here and say that i want to control the left wrist this time and maybe I can I can say I want to use the same control. So rather than uh, you know creating two different ramp, I can say okay I want my shield to be influenced by the same curve ramp, or I can create a separate one, or I can create my own expression, or you know whatsoever. So here maybe X um, is uh, is convenient, but maybe I may want to use uh, um, the Y axis as well. Let's see. Great. And uh, if we want to really have a nice simulation here, uh, let's say that we don't want it to be dynamic. So everything, every single character will get a sign with a value. And now we'll get, you know, something more organic. The spears, they're, they're kind of aligned like all the soldiers, they, they understood the rule, but some of them are more 
lazy than others and they have their own style in in having that in holding that spear so really simple way to add procedural animation so here we've been doing this on bones but if your characters has blend shapes um, this is also something that you can do if you want to you know animate that blend shape like blink eyes open mouth you can use that curve controller that ram controller animate that ram controller to create that blink um, and assign it to a blind data blend shape value here so hope that helps and uh, see you in the next uh, video